So you will hear me repeat some of the expectations that Esme referred to. And that's just to reinforce the procedure a bit more. Um, this project is called Bottle Cap Art. And this actually stemmed from um, our teacher in Watsonville. We did a huge project for World Ocean Day where students were collecting like hundreds, thousands of bottle caps to create their own murals. So we decided to pair this assignment down to a smaller form and integrate um, digital pixels and, and putting shape and form together to create a bigger picture and also utilizing space. Um, so when you get your kit, it will be all in here. These are the templates for students to make their digital design on. They're a bit smaller than the giant murals we did, but that will be better for you, trust me. Um, once they learn this concept, they can find these materials again. They're just old cardboard that they can either grid themselves or find paper to do that. I'll get to the project example after I explain this a little bit more. Um, so yeah, you'll get your bin. It's good to put out the materials and have stations. This bin will um, serve 10 students and they work in pairs in terms of the materials. And we have the lesson plan. It's always good to read the objective of the lesson and show the example. So the students have an idea of what they're expected to do. Um, the instructional guides, we start with this painting on pointillism, this is George S. Surratt, and it's, a, it's an impressionist period and using colorful dots together closely to create a bigger image. And over the years, over the centuries, that developed into digital pixels. There's an explanation on what digital pixels are. We do have video resources, but that really, we can share that with you. It really depends on what kind of um, AV technology you have at the branch, whether you want to show that or not. But we do have printouts that describe how the, the square digital pixels will turn into a greater scene. Um, once that's explained, we have some coloring dittos for them. And really they have to just match the image over here. And it, it goes with the concept of adding color and shape to create an, a recognizable image. There are enough printouts here for two workshops. Um, so I think there are five images. If Kind of your kids all want to do a leaf that's fine we have a black and white one at the back to kind of notify you that we're, we're done with the colors and we're going to need to replenish that um so yeah encourage them to use a color one so they can start playing with color and shape and pattern let us know if you need more copies um but they will do a little warm-up with the color coloring in and that's in our procedure for the lesson plan this activity is going to require some time with the bottle caps, so it's good to kind of time yourself with the warm up. If the student isn't finished, you can say that's fine. You can work on it later. Let's move on to the next part of the project. The glue guns again are, are wireless, which is really fun. Um, each of the USB ports can charge two at a time, and it's encouraged to do that before the students arrive so that they're working when you get them. There are five. Oh, can I say one thing? Yeah, real quick. I forgot to mention this, and I think this is worth mentioning is that the on off button is right here. Yes. Make yeah. sure that that button is off when yeah. you're back. When they're back. cleaning up. And that's a really yeah. good point. Thanks, I've made the instructions for them in here. It's made out of paper. So, in order to present higher, just want to make sure that those are off. And I would say this is a great teaching moment for the students to teach them how to turn it on and off. Mm. It also has a um, little stand. So if you see this, you can encourage them to hold them properly um, to prevent any disasters. Is, is there, um, yes. Sorry to ask, but is no, there like an a indicator when it's on to you know like when it's hot or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I think there's a little light. It's oh, kind perfect. Of, it's kind of, okay. uh, it's not too bright, but it does show you when it's on okay. or off. There's also a USB cord if it's getting really low. Mm. Um, but in order to just have flexibility in the space, depending on the space you have, we do recommend that you charge them beforehand. Cool. Um, and that's a great, yeah, to check that they're off when you're doing cleanup, double check it. These might cut, uh, run low really fast. So um, you can reach out to us if you need more of it or just kind of teaching the students to, uh, you know, not make designs with the glue they're <laughs> with the caps. Um, I do encourage you to 
teach how to use the glue gun safely before distributing any of the other materials because they're going to get distracted with the bottle caps. So it's good to teach them proper procedure before um, distributing any of the design. Um, let's see. There will be some paper where they can draw what kind of design they want to do. At this point, they're starting to think, how can they take these bottle caps, pair them together to make a larger design? Um, one problem we ran into is buying bottle caps for this assignment. So we're really trying to supply some for the kit while also encouraging you if you have some and for students to collect them. Um, it kind of defeats the purpose if we're purchasing <laughs> these plastic bottle caps. Um, metal caps are totally fine too. Um, I started collecting some. I love that there's different shapes that you can work with um, and different textures. Who knows what this could turn into, you know, like a robot eye. It uh, really depends. Um, most you, of them are a general um, size. Just real quick, I yes. mean, if you want to make that a little part of your branch of staff, you know, like set aside a box um, just for this, uh, that would be an awesome. Yeah, idea. we're also doing that at the office. We're going to start collecting them. Um, it's like it's, a little box in the, like, in the kitchen that's mm -hmm. like, or near the trash can that says like, wait, save your bottle cap, we need it for something. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't even recycle yeah. mine anymore. I just clean them out and keep them for this project. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's really important to have them clean though. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we live in a time where we shouldn't be sharing a lot of uh, dirty things, mm -hmm. but also for individual health too. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get something that has like orange juice residue on it. Um, so that either is having the students clean them before bringing them in, or if you take that collection of bottle caps, wash them beforehand before the students use it. That's just really, really great. Okay, so once students have a chance to kind of trace out their design or draw their design, you can give them one of these um, pieces of cardboard with the grid paper. The size is kind of limited, but again, you can tell them that they can make their own. They can do a mural size if they have enough materials to do so. It's a great group project. The reason I included two sets is that there are two workshops worth of materials in one kit. So to be really aware that, oh, this is actually for the next branch and I shouldn't be using this. Um, logistically, we can't make one per branch. So just being mindful that if you see extra supplies, it's probably going to be the branch who signed up for it and they're going to need it when they get them. That also goes for the bottle caps. Um, it's probably not realistic for them to complete an entire scene um, in one hour. So what I've been saying is take this opportunity to add more, you know, play with the design. Maybe you can continue adding the bottle caps even after the workshop. That will really help with um, not discouraging them to finish in a time frame. This one does take a little bit longer, but it is fun to kind of look at your resources out there and say, oh, wow, will that work as like a seal somewhere in my artwork? Um, or maybe going abstract. They also don't have to literally make a digital design. Um, and the caps don't have to fit these squares as, as well. I'm just trying to think of what students would say if they were frustrated a little bit. But the whole point is just to kind of look with about, look at and see what color and texture and space will do with a kind of repetitive shape and simple. So yeah, that's a little bit about the bottle cap. Let's see. Oh, one thing that we have um, on the back of all the binders, except for the forest games, we just photographed a way to clean up and have it organized so that the next branch can have um, a really organized kit when they get them. I think cleanup is a great time to teach students how to clean up instead of them all just giving it to you for you to put it away. You can assign them different jobs. Again, make sure the glue guns are turned off, but that will really help you not have to do everything. Um, and then they can teach, they can teach themselves responsibility that way as well. They can take these home, obviously, as well as the CD spinners that they create. Uh, if they want to donate some, uh, some bottle caps that they didn't use, that'd be fantastic. But if they want to take them home, that's fine too. You just have to keep in mind that this is for two workshops, so they can't just take a ton of them home. Um, let's see, there are various coloring materials for how they want to color the background of their design. Um, I'd say the goal is to get them to glue maybe a few just to start um, and to time that well. So they have something that they can work on post the workshop and really encouraging that them this could take more than an hour to work on. Yeah, 
Any questions? Uh, I don't know which branches are doing this, but maybe we could pour half of the bottle caps into a secret box. Oh, and then mm -hmm. and label it for that branch, branch so the yes. other branch knows it's not for them to use. Yes, yes. 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 <laughs> and we're at least having them in separate bags. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think we're going to, um, we are ordering more, so we're going to have a different um, bag for the individual bin. Um, this is just for one workshop. We have about 300 per workshop, but ideally, like I used I think 35 and it doesn't even cover the whole grid. So um, the more you can get the best, the better, the more you can hide away until they need more, <laughs> the better. Um, yeah, so th this is kind of like the golden mm -hmm. item. <laughs> oh, I completely, I used to do like the, the cars with the bottle cap. Oh, yes. And I, I would always show up, I would like the, like, <laughs> it's a good time to keep an eye on your local taqueria too, because sometimes they have the bottle oh, well, there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I have that. Yeah. <laughs> Great idea. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> How many of the, of the grids yeah, are, are, are so there? Yeah. I'll just That's what I was thinking. Yeah. So there are 10 grids per workshop. So okay. you'll get a total of 20 in one bin. So your workshop, 10, the next workshop, 10. Um, you might get a student who just kind of wants to help another student mm -hmm. with theirs. So this is a great pairing activity, but there is enough uh, grids for, for each student to use. Um, and I would say something that you could like if, it's, if the student was like really here to do the whole activity, you could just have them get cardboard and make some lines on it. Yeah, yeah. If they're thinking big, sure. like support it, you know, yeah. just, just keep in mind that you know, tell them they only have an hour, but if they want to do a massive mural for like World Oceans Day or a bigger pixelated project, it's good to support that. And really, it's just a big piece of cardboard with the grid lines. And a lot of time is going to be spent on the design aspect. So also encouraging them not to glue it down too soon, kind of laying out the bottle caps mm -hmm. beforehand and then going for the glue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're pretty permanent. So once it's down, it's down. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed the glue sticks are different colors. Does it yes. actually come out and show the different colors? It, it does. Yeah, that, cool. so these came with the glue guns. I think we'll probably get the clear ones in bulk. Um, where did I use that? I did notice that they do come out a little bit of a different color. But actually, now I'm thinking about it, this one's pink. And these are drying white. So they may, I'm not sure how that works material-wise, but they may dry white. Okay. Reminds me of the, the purple blue sticks. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's true. They do yeah, they exactly. do end up being clear. Um, yeah, I specifically use this color for this area just in case. And it looks like they are clear. So that's probably something a student would ask. Ooh. It's good to know that they're most likely going to be clear or very opaque, maybe with just a little bit of color. Yeah, in a STEM workshop like that, it'd be so cool. Like, you can have the hypothesis about oh my like, goodness. Oh, you know, yeah, like, right? Let's like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, a whole yeah. separate yeah. workshop on that. But yeah, I mean, like all of these are having students like look at materials differently, right? And and that's what we're asking for them, right? Innovate, and, like start taking the science concepts into like engineering yeah. and stuff, right? Just look at those materials differently. Let's make a hypothesis mm -hmm. and then experiment together. Yeah. 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 You use it as much as possible. Yeah. Anything else? These don't fit in here, they'll just be on the top. Um, for new people, hello. Uh, anything that is uh, seems to be done, let's say all this glue runs out, we encourage you not to throw it away because we have bulk glue at the office that we just refill these with. Okay. Um, even markers, we can send them off to a reuse place. Um, and then, of course, the bottle caps, or sorry, the tops. I don't think there's any glue sticks in here, but if you get another kit that has a glue stick that's run out, please save this cap for this project. Um, and then we'll dispose of this part. That is it for bottle cap. Um, also encouraged to take photos of the students work while they're working, trying not to get their faces, but like a great aerial shot of all the materials and the work that they're working on. Um, we have a little instruction at the end of the lesson. 
where you can send those photos to us for outreach. And I'll just talk about this one more time. This is kind of a, the attendance sheet. You're not recording students' names, but we do want to make sure we know where the kit is going, where it's traveling to, um, the date of the workshop, how many students attended, and your names is for tracking. Um, and you'll start to notice that there's uh, one bin and two bins. Right now, we just have the first round of bins, but there will be a second set of bins in rotation too. So it's really good to see like, oh, does this go in this bin? We'll probably put identify numbers on the edge of it too. And then we go over to the case. Cool, so there's that. And also if you have any suggestions, maybe our cleanup is not working and you're like, it would be better to do this. Please let us know because we are kind of restarting this um, reuse kit program and we would love suggestions on improvement and what you see worked well with the students. Um, maybe that didn't work well in the lesson plan. Any of that feedback would be awesome. Do you actually have to glue it down and uh, the next students will use it? Because it's a lot of fun to kind of place yeah, that, depending on how you, you are. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, that's a really wonderful idea. I like that too. You can kind of put them on the ground too. Like, it's something really great. Sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So tactile. <laughs> 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 Andy Gold's worthy. Yes. 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 I think that's a really good idea is kind of what to do with the projects if they're not going home or they're not returning it back to us. So you will see that revision in the lesson plans. Um, so thank you for that. Yeah, I just wrote it down. Could it, can we also, in the case that that that, that's, uh, that happens, can we just say like you can also bring it back to us, and then we can also send it back to you guys? Maybe of course, yeah, yeah. Display yeah. yeah. it yeah. for a little bit, and then we'll yeah. or put it on the library. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we'll we'll resource it once it cool. goes back to us. Like they're not attached to it anymore. Cool. I know it's, you'll start looking at them. You already are looking at them in a yeah. different way, but anything that's <laughs> even close to a cat, like, well, there's so much of it out there. Um, and then you'll have enough materials to for the kids. They'll definitely, like I was searching for the orange and pink ones, and I already know what's in here. So putting my mindset with them, they may start collecting their colors. Mm. So encouraging the sharing. Um, originally, we did have paint in this project, so kids could paint the bottle caps. The fact that it's an hour and painting should be a workshop on its own, yeah. we just omitted it. But they really, really want all their bottle caps to be a certain color. You can encourage that, you know, next time you have paint them you can do the same thing a lot of options or to get home and start trying to sell those bottle caps oh, yeah. <laughs> the specific colors and there's, <laughs> there's such great examples online <laughs> schools mostly that do these huge murals um and it's it's cool if they can maybe bring that to their school or that kind of idea so it's just really kind of practicing the concept here okay so, yeah.